The final speaker on this panel is an acclaimed author and media critic. Uh, he's a filmmaker whose writings illustrate that the damaging racial and ethnic stereotypes of Arabs, blacks, and others injure innocent people. Dr. Jack Shaheen is a distinguished visiting scholar at New York University. He served as a CBS News consultant, how do you ever get that job, on Middle East affairs, <laughs> and as a professional film consultant. Please welcome Dr. Jack Shaheen. Uh, Richard. Goebbels would probably use the Arab proverb, by repetition, even a donkey learns, uh, to initiate his propaganda. And Alice, um, Israeli, Jew equal good, uh, Arab, Muslim equal evil, is the subject of my brief comments this morning. I want to thank you. Let me start with another Arab proverb. One hand alone does not clap. And I'm very humbled and honored to be here with my Jewish and Israeli colleagues uh, who receive criticism from both sides. Uh, and I think it's real, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's just good to be together to kind of work towards peace and to bring people together. Um, one more quote, Sophocles, I'll paraphrase Sophocles. Those who tell the stories rule society. And Jack Valente, Washington, former president of the Motion Picture Association of America. Washington and Hollywood spring from the same DNA. Yeah, so I, you know, and, and finally, the last quote, my wife loves it when I use quotes, so uh, you have to either blame her or credit her, all right? It is, while I was walking in the hall, I saw this terrific photograph of my hero when I was a young man teaching documentary film, Edward R. Murrow. And Murrow's great quote, though what we do not see is as important, if not more important, than what we do see. And I sincerely hope someone would send that message to C-SPAN. <laughs> because they're not here today. <laughs> uh, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about uh, a little, and, 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 and believe me, there are wonderful Israeli filmmakers that do not do what the Israeli filmmakers I'm talking about today do. I, I want to start with a uh, gold, Menachem Golden and Yoram Globus, uh, who in the 1980s bought a motion picture company called Canon Films. And they churned out dozens of films that vilified Arabs and Muslims. And no one really wrote about this or discussed this. And the only person to bring it to light was my friend Arthur Lord, who's since passed on, a Jewish American who worked for NBC News. And he did a special for NBC on the Today Show and received just hundreds of hate mails. But I thought, you know, to get things started, liven it up, would show a quick clip of some Golan and Globus films, plus a few others, and then I'll move on to television and we'll wrap it up. So can we show the Glo Golan Globus film? Another way we can look at the connection between politics and entertainment, Washington and Hollywood, is the manner in which historically cinema has projected the Palestinian people. Since the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, our support has never wavered. Every American administration has made it clear whose side we're on. In contrast, Washington's policymakers have failed to support the millions of Palestinians who have been made refugees and who have lived lives of poverty and squalor as a result, while policies impact opinions. So equally unjust is how Hollywood has presented the conflict. Movies repeatedly depict Palestinians as terrorists. 
making it seem that all Palestinians are evil. Made in America, Colonel. Now that image has been perpetuated by Hollywood films, beginning with the film Exodus. It dealt with the very early conflict. Here, Palestinians are either invisible or they're linked with Nazis, perpetrators of horrific acts. The 1966 movie Cast a Giant Shadow is another early film presenting Israelis as innocent victims of Palestinian violence. Kirk Douglas is an American military specialist and he goes to assist the Israelis. Some of the dialogue in this film reads like it came straight from the public relations department of the Israeli government. Now here's a country surrounded by five Arab nations ready to shove them into the Mediterranean. No guns, no tanks, no friends, nothing. People fighting with their bare hands for a little piece of desert. The Palestinians in this movie are the lowest of the low. We see them solely as vicious gunmen, wide-eyed maniacs. They will kill anyone, anywhere, anytime, for any reason. There's one brutal image in particular of a burnt-out bus with a dead Jewish woman tied to its side, with the Star of David carved into her back. And when the Palestinians finally speak, they mock and psychologically terrorize another woman trapped in a bus. Well, if we jump forward a decade to the film Black Sunday, the Palestinian terrorist is now a woman. Striking where it hurts them most. Where they feel most at home. She flies the Goodyear blimp into a Miami stadium and tries to wipe out 80,000 Americans at the Super Bowl. She cold-bloodedly eliminates anyone in her path. The movies that we see basically follow Washington's policy. It's reflected in the cinema over and over again, particularly during the 1980s and the 90s, where you had perhaps 30 films which showed Palestinians as, um, as a people who were intent on injuring all Americans. How may we help you, Jad? One of the most despicable portrayals of Arabs and Palestinians occurs in the 1987 film Death Before Dishonor. First, they murder a guard and then slaughter an Israeli family. They kidnap and torture an American Marine and in cold blood execute another. and they burn the American flag right in front of the American embassy and then dispatch a suicide bomber to blow it up. <laughs> One reason we've not been allowed to empathize with any Palestinian uh, on, on, on the silver screen is, is due to two Israeli producers, Menachem Golan and Yoram Globus. These two filmmakers created an American company called Canon, and they release, in a period of 20 years, at least 30 films which vilify all things Arab, particularly Palestinians. They even came out with a film called Hell Squad, showing Vegas showgirls trouncing Arabs in the middle of the desert. I mean, the, the, the Vegas showgirls, I think, uh, is, is a good way to wrap up the Golan and Globus film. Uh, you know, these were, of course, aimed at uh, teenagers. They're all B-minus films, but very, very successful movies. There are a couple of myths that American filmmakers, television producers, as well as some Israelis uh, perpetuated. One was a land without a people, uh, that, that there are no Palestinians. Uh, two, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And three, the only Palestinians that exist uh, are terrorists. 
Now, if we fast forward to today, and this really disturbs me. Well, let's go back to 1996. Uh, 1996 was the first real Israeli introduction uh, to American television. And that's when CBS TV introduced Ziva David, who was a Mossad agent to a very successful series called NCIS. Not only did David wear a Star of David, she also wore an IDF uniform to show the military influence on her character. Harvard University professor Etienne Kensky identified David as, quote, the most prominent televisual Israeli in the United States. Her depiction was praised for exposing the Western public to Israeli society and culture, its positive portrayal of an Israeli, and its cheerleading role in promoting the ties between the United States and Israel. Now here she is working with American agents, not only killing Arabs and Arab American and Muslim American terrorists here, but throughout the world, even in Israel. There's one episode where she goes to Israel and, and kills some of the most ugly Palestinians. I, I can't watch it again. I mean, I, I, I watch so many TV shows and films, but, but this one took the cake. Anyway, that, that show lasted for nine years. Now, can you imagine, there was no press on this, if two filmmakers called Hishmi and Hunedi created canon films and vilified Jews and Israelis the way Golan and Glob Globus vilified Arabs and Palestinians, what the press might have been like. And, and why didn't the producer of NCIS include a Palestinian heroine working with NCIS? You know, call her Leila Rafidi. So Leila and Nada, they could have done the Dubki and the Hora all at the same time. But no, 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 we have to have this biased point of view over and over again. I've been talking about this issue for more than four decades now. I gave my first speech at the American University in April of 1975. And what I keep trying to hammer home gently, very gently, is entertainment acts as propaganda. We don't see it as propaganda. We think it's mere fluff. The films of Leni Reifenstahl in Nazi Germany were more effective the Germans' propaganda films. So we cannot look at these films in a vacuum and think, you know, it's, they're, they're pure fluff. If we fast forward to today, there are two Israeli producers, Avi Nir and Gideon Raff, responsible for some of the most horrific anti-Arab shows I've seen in my life. Tyrant, Dig, and Homeland. Homeland, you know, it's sort of like 24 for grown-ups. I understand the Israeli version is much better than this one. If you haven't seen Tyrant, don't. It's, it's been renewed for another season. It's all about this mythical Arab country where Arabs kill Arabs, slaughter Arabs. The one brother, you know, seduces women while the family watches, even rapes his daughter-in-law. Dig is set in Jerusalem. You'd never know there were Arabs in Jerusalem at all. They, they don't appear, except last week, they did appear. They attacked the car, you know, with one of our diplomats, beat up our diplomat and the Israeli driver. That's the only time in four episodes I've seen a Palestinian, except for one guy called Khalid, who runs from place to place. And if you see the movie Dig, and not Dig, yeah, it's the Brad Pitt movie. I'm sorry. Um, it, again, in that film, they say, um, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. It's World War Z. I don't know if you've seen World War Z or not. But, but that, again, is a, is a theme that's repeated over and over again. So there has been no press on this Israeli presence and how they portray Arabs on American television, these two producers. And they convey a very hard line, a very biased perspective of how Arabs are perceived, how we think of Arabs. Last night before going to bed, I flicked on the TV channel because I couldn't sleep, and I was watching The Blacklist. And there's a key player in The Blacklist, the Mossad agent, who wiped out some Iranian terrorists. <laughs> you know, and so this, what we talked about earlier today, what my distinguished panelists have brought about in terms of a presence of government government, our government working with Israelis, 
holds true as well in the entertainment industry. So let me conclude. I need my glasses for this because I wrote it down and I can't remember it. So here we go. I want to conclude on an optimistic note. Joseph Lowry, a humble man, champion of civil rights. Uh, this was at President Barack Hussein Obama's inauguration. It reminds us that those who have vilified Arabs and Muslims in the past have the ability to eliminate them. They just need to embrace the wisdom of Lowry. Quote, Lord, help us to make choices on the side of love, not hate, on the side of inclusion, not exclusion, tolerance, not intolerance, and help us work for that day when black will not be asked to get in the back, when brown can stick around, when yellow will be mellow, when the red man can get ahead, man, I, and I added this phrase, and when the Israeli and Arab man get it right and see the light and refuse to fight. I began with those who tell the stories rule society. When we begin to tell the stories, American and Israeli filmmakers, when we begin to tell stories, now more than ever before, fresh new stories, stories that shatter stereotypes, stories that humanize the people, stories that conquer fear, stories that create new ways of seeing, new ways of thinking and feeling, when we create those stories, we will crush hate and advance peace and sort of remind ourselves that all humankind is truly one family in the care of God. Thank you very much. That again was Dr. Jack Shaheen uh, who provided us the uh, Las Vegas Review, thank you.